this is your show, Mr. Mayor. And up until tonight, it's pretty much been a one-man show. You bought the memorial, and you had borough workers install it in front of the library, all on your own. When I noticed a couple of days later that there was a memorial there, I called and asked you who authorized it. You told me the Library Board of Trustees authorized it several months ago. You told me I should talk to them, not to you. In fact, the Library Board of Trustees never discussed the memorial, much less voted to authorize it. And the council clearly hasn't weighed in on it either. Otherwise, why would there be two resolutions on the agenda tonight to retroactively accept your donation and put it on the library lawn? When I found out the library board hadn't even discussed the memorial, I sent you an email telling you it raised a constitutional issue and asking you to move it off of public property. Then I sent you a letter by certified mail making the same points and again requesting that you move it. I got no response from you, sir. No response. You weren't willing to talk about it, period. That's when I went to the American Humanist Association. The issue here isn't about veterans. We all agree that our community and our nation owe a very, very deep debt to the service and the sacrifice of our veterans, all of our veterans. What the issue is about is government and religion. To put it briefly, in this country, government and religion are supposed to be independent of each other. Government isn't supposed to endorse or favor one religion over another. The Constitution forbids that. Unfortunately, Mr. Mayor, that's what your memorial does. And with the cross it contains, your memorial singles out Christian soldier, soldiers for honor. And in doing that, it ignores veterans of all other religions and veterans of no religion at all. Memorials that are put on public property should honor all of our veterans, not just some of our veterans. I'm sure that to some people this sounds like some kind of silly little nitpicking issue of political correctness. It's not. It's a very fundamental issue. The Constitution is the foundation of our government and our country. It sets up the way the U.S. government is supposed to work. And it guarantees all of us, individually, such rights as freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom to assemble, and freedom of religion. In so doing, it forbids the government from getting involved in religion. This is the same Constitution, Mr. Mayor, that you swore to support when you took your oath of office in this very room. And it's the same Constitution that generations of soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Air Force personnel have fought and died to defend. The cross is not a blanket, automatic symbol that covers every U.S. veteran. When the government buries veterans in U.S. national cemeteries in this country, it doesn't automatically use a cross on their grave. It issues a standard, tablet-shaped headstone, and on that headstone, it carves a symbol of the veteran's religion or other fundamental belief. Christians get crosses inscribed on their headstones. Jews get the Star of David. Muslims get the, cres the Crescent and the Star. And Buddhists get the Dharma Wheel. There are symbols for Hindus, Shintoists, and many others. There are even symbols for humanists and atheists. Even overseas, in national cemeteries that were built decades ago, Jewish soldiers lie beneath the Star of David, not the cross. Your memorial is very touching, Mr. Mayor, and it would look fine outside a church or on other private property. It doesn't belong on public property. That cross makes it a memorial to Christian soldiers, not to all soldiers. The thing is that if anyone wants to Google the phrase kneeling soldier, they'll find many similar memorials that do not have religious symbols or raise constitutional issues. They feature the same grieving combat soldier. Some have nothing else, and some have the traditional makeshift memorial that's raised in battlefield burials, a rifle stuck in the earth with the helmet perched on top of it. All of these other memorials honor the grief and sacrifice our soldiers go through. I certainly wouldn't have a problem with one of them going in front of the library. But you chose a religious one, and there is a problem with that. This isn't your first effort to promote religion. God you trust is on every single bit of our money. Christmas is a federal holiday, federal holiday. This governing body just said a prayer before this meeting. People are misusing the term separation of church and state. It's designed, the government does not force you to have a religion. People are going to be exposed to religion in this country. I want to make it quite clear to all in Roosevelt Park that the humanists of North Jersey do not speak for many my religion or my beliefs. To say other religions would be offended on TV is rude. 
they do not occupy the moral high ground, they do not represent religions. To assume that that organization somehow falls, on, that all organizations, organized religions fall under the umbrella of them is pretentious, arrogant, and factually untrue. To be honest, it's offensive for non-believers <coughs> to represent faiths. Next, this is an art display. The art was never used in America as a Christian recruiting poster at any time. When you search Google for the ambiguous word graveyard, the first 100 photos, only three of them do not contain crosses. Soldiers don't carry around tombstones in the battlefield. They make a marker on the fly. They put a, they put a marker down so the body can be identified. Art, all art is subjective. I saw sorrow, I saw sacrifice, I saw respect, and I saw honor when I viewed your art. Not once did it invoke the thought of religion. Not once. This governing body, as well as the library board, has never and will never have the power to censor art, books, or movies. Rosa Park loves arts, has invited other countries to bring their art to Rosa Park and display. What message are we sending them? When the first work of art displayed is being censored? Sorry, people, you just don't have that power. You don't have the power to censor art. You're, you're never going to be given that power. Mr. Olfenson, thank you for your donation, and thank you for the service to our country. As far as placing the donation without a vote, that precedent was set already. I'm not going to go into this, I'm not going to name names, but we all know that there was a donation that was placed on public property without proper authority, and there was nothing said about that. That was okay. We all know that you hold as much power as anybody else on this board, and someone else should not feel they have more power than this mayor. Um, I'd like to say God bless the people of Rosa Park, and God bless America. We have a moral fabric in this town. Thousands of people belong to the Church of the Assumption. I don't know how many hundreds belong to the Community Methodist Church. I'm not here to count who's a Christian, uh, who's Jewish, who's Episcopalian, Lutheran. It doesn't matter. This is a small sign. To have a council person say, if that sign is not taken out, you're going to be sued by Monica Miller. Did a little research on Monica Miller. She's with the Humanism Society. And I learned, I don't know if she had anything to do with it, but somebody in the uh, Humanism Society in New Jersey went took a ride down to Gloucester Township, in Gloucester County, and pulled that maneuver on that mayor. You get that cross down, or you're going to get sued. He said, sue us. They never got sued. But to have the audacity to hold the, the town and the, and, and, and the council hostage, I mean, where do you turn? Who, who, who does that? Now, it was bad enough when I was here back in February with a $25,000 secret nightly resolution suddenly appear from Councilwoman Story, and before that, we've heard it a thousand times about the Christmas tree lighting. Um, it's, I don't know if she's seeking headlines, uh, but everybody knows that Roosevelt Park has become a controversial community, not what it once was, not when our fathers and grandfathers fought in World War II, and um, which led me to this, and I'll, I'll give it to Mayor, he can pass it around. When those boys from the United States Army and Marines tried to take that hill in Normandy Beach, when tens of thousands died even before they got into the water because their sacks were so heavy, you're getting mowed down by 15 millimeter guns, cutting them in half. But, you know, what, what's your favorite? It's real, it happened. I don't know that any one of those men or women were taking their last breath and said, oh, send me a humanist. Or did they all say, God, please help me. 
So I think that's important. Uh, I was going to say some other things about the 39 presidents of the United States that have religious affiliations. I have them here. And, um, I, you know, I, I just think things are a little bit out of whack. I'm, I'm not blaming anybody. I just think that um, maybe the reins need to be tightened up a little. You, you, can't, you can't have a councilwoman of the same party uh, running with the mayor as, as a running mate and then sandbag him with this because he put a piece of wood up. It's 69 inches by 10 inches. I took my wife today. I said, I want you to see this. She said, see what? I said, the, the thing that uh, Mayor Hogan put up. Oh, I don't see it. I had to get her out of the car, let her, let her look at it. She says, is that what all this is about? And that really is. Is that what this is all about? I rest my case. I'm going to leave this with the mayor. One caveat. I am also the commander of the Veterans of Foreign War of this borough. We incorporated post 9119 Rosa Park into ours. And therefore, I feel the right to speak and offer my opinion or our opinion. We have many symbols, many. To the fact that somebody is taking the time and even the, the township here to discuss the issue. Again, anything representing or honoring veterans, again, is well needed, especially in this day and age. Currently in our service, those that are in service constitute 1% of the population of the United States, 1%. We've never ever in our history ever been represented in the military by just 1%. So therefore the sacrifices are even greater and therefore should even be recognized even more. I sat here tonight and I heard many a great way to address the problem rather than legal ways. Wouldn't it be a shame to see all those funds be channeled into defending what we all basically believe Oh, in one form or another. It, it seems just like such a waste of uh, resources. And I would just say, leave you here very briefly in speaking, and just say, even in this room, symbols of all faiths exist. So why aren't we debating those? No, we're not. Why is it just this one thing? Is it because it's a political issue in a, 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 an area where we want to take issue with one another rather than uh, address it, deal with it. I think that the monument with the other religious symbols would be just fine. And yeah, it would be very apropos. I thank you for your time. I think uh, I'm going to bring a little bit of an interesting perspective to this because I was also, once I got out of the infantry, I was a combat artist in Vietnam. I had a painting that went to the Paris Peace Talks and was presented to a general there. The only thing I can tell you is that I'm sorry I never designed this kneeling soldier. But the kneeling soldier, no matter what war, means the same. It doesn't mean that you're with the religion or not. Many of the time when we buried somebody, or if he was buried, in our war, they were able to get back by helicopter very fast. But if he was buried, they put him uh, across there as a marker. Okay, uh, it was the easiest thing to do. Not so easy to construct the Star of David. But um, we did, I had Jewish men in my unit, and I would say to the gentleman that wants to volunteer to donate uh, the same thing with the, with the Jewish Star, that's commendable. I think that would be wonderful. I'd like to see all of them out there. Because you're not just letting the veterans know about it. You're letting the guys coming home and, and ladies coming home from your town see that, gee, there is something here in the town. Otherwise, it's just a blank plate saying there's nothing commemorating anything that these people have done. Uh, it shows them something. And uh, again, 
I would recommend it. And uh, I think you, you have a great thing there. And God bless you. And as far as the humanist or atheist, I know it sounds silly, but a blank space, there, there's their symbol. Thank you. United States Navy from 1958 to 1963. When I first heard this issue come up, I did a little research on the computer, which I can assure you I'm not the best on. But I was able to pull up a lot of things, and one of them was the Normandy Cemetery. And anybody out in the audience and anybody in the TV audience wants to pull it up, the first pictures that you're going to get is a field of white crosses. So I said, how did those crosses start? Why did they start? Why is it crosses and why not tombstones? Well, at the time during the Second World War, battles were being fought back and forth, back and forth. So you moved the Germans out of the town, your troops went after them. The people that came after them were the grave registration. And so that they could find the fallen soldiers, what they did was they made a cross out of wood, put it where the soldier was either buried or had fallen, took his dog tags off and hung it on it. This way the grave registration people could come up and they could say, this is Joe Blow, and they mark it off, and then they find out where he served and what battle he was in, and then after a period of time, and I'm not saying it was a couple of days or a couple of weeks, it could have been months, they notified the family. In that cemetery, there are 9,800 white crosses. And to me, they're not a cross, they're a marker. They are not a Christian, because the only thing that's in, on it is his unit, his name, his serial number, and the date that the registration people found him. And then they were able to go back to the people and tell them where their sons or their husbands or their fathers or their grandfathers or their loved ones were buried. There are 23 or 26, I screwed up a little on that one, memorial cemeteries throughout the world it's been an absolute embarrassment. I've, I've come across people from other towns that are laughing at us saying, hey, I see your town on TV again. Look, what's with that woman? So you know what? Let's put it into it. If it's a marker, it's a marker. And if you look at it as a marker, then that's what it is. So no, no matter what the professor says he thinks you know, it is, just because it represents a, 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 a Christian symbol doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a Christian symbol, but if you're a Christian and you look at it and you relate to it that way, then it's fine. Other than that, let it stay. Let's put an end to this. And let's stop being embarrassed on Channel 4, Channel 7, Channel 2, and on Files and every other station. Have a good evening. Thank you.